Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling is Zim. I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to take a look at the things that are new in Zim 10.9.0. We'll start with a flare in this bubbling and then in the next we'll look at binding and perhaps in another one we'll look at a variety of uh, updates. Okay, so let's go take a look at flare. This little, I don't know, marching, twirling thing, it was made with flare, that shape. We're going to remove the shield. And we do have some volume happening here as well in, in this app. This rocket ship was made with flare. And these walls right here were made with flare. And the edges of this fancy, fancy button were made with flare. Shall we launch? And off it goes. So you can click there to find the docs. All of this is at zimjs.com slash flare. Let's bring it down. Uh, Oh, no, sorry, zimjs.com slash 10 slash flare.html. What am I thinking? I'm just trying to find the, the F11 button. Here it is. Yeah, so zimjs.com slash 10 slash flare. I like that. It's part of the, the new things that are new in Zim 10. So we've been putting those in a 10 folder. Those can all be found back on the Zim site, by the way. If you go Zim, there's a, a couple ways in. One is that 10 right there but also hitting the main logo of 10 will take you. Ooh, I see we need to update the 10 to include the flare and uh, the binding that we've also got. These are the new features that have come in Zim 10. That was a wrapper, which was new back in uh, Zim 10.8, and this is 10.9 we're sitting at now. All right, uh, heading back to the flare. Oh, just while we're here, uh, come on in and, and try out. Like uh, we've we've had three entries last last month, and we're about to announce a winner for that. So uh, look out for that. I'll probably announce it on YouTube as well or on social media. And if you work with Zim, hey, it's it's easy. Come on in and just post your what post what you're building here. Have a look at the Zim Zap to see if you want to enter this contest. That would be great if you did. And we were heading back towards Flare. Let me just run this again then. So we refresh. There's the little feet spinner. That's called a multi-flare. So we took a flare and it's pinned and we can, uh, with pinned flares, you can sort of add them up or join them more easily. Multi-flare. And here we're removing the shield. We'll just leave it. We'll turn down the volume here. Boop and uh, leave it like so, so that we can reference uh, how we made these things as we go through the code. Let's take a look through the code now. So Flare, we're at 10.9.0 and beyond to get that. Uh, there was also an update to create JS. Uh, this is actually quite an interesting update, but we'll talk more about that later in our sort of the, the, the variety of other updates that happen right now. We want to take a look at Flare. So we come on down into here, and we've got, uh, oh, I just want to show you maybe because this does make use of the bitmap color and the gradient color, uh, we can mention that as we go here too. We've got a new way to do color, to handle the gradients. So that's a bitmap color. We're uh, putting in a bitmap as a color. And this is a gradient color. Before we would have had to set up this gradient sort of separately. There was no way to create the rectangle with the gradient, you would have to then dot, I don't know, uh, linear gradient, I think, after. Uh, so now we've made it so that you can pass in these colors to Zim shapes. Uh, anywhere where there's a color, you can pass in a new gradient color, like so, or a new radial color for a radial gradient. This one's doing a, uh, the sky, the, the gradient in the sky there. Right, that uh, purple to green to purple. We've also got an example of a moon up there with a radial gradient. The bitmap gradient is this sort of pebbled looking stuff at the bottom. That's what a, it's a little bitmap pattern that we've put on there as a, as a color. We're also, well, okay, let's go in and see what Flare's doing. We, this was a little test to make sure that the flare worked with style. So we're saying, hey, set the border color of all our flares at the moment while the style is active to dark. 
and we're going to build the wall now. So the wall is a new flare. See that okay? The wall is a new flare. We're passing in some, some basic things there, I guess. Uh, thickness is not the thickness of the border, that's border width. Thickness is how thick does the how thick thick does the flare start? So we're making the wall now, and this is basically staying, saying start at 230 pixels wide. Uh, that's this wall bit on the left hand side. We're, so we're starting here. We're going to flare in, and then we're not flaring, and then we're flaring out, and then we're not flaring, etc. And uh, each step, this is all built in one flare, and here, here are the, the various lengths for those flares. So these are how long those lengths will be. And these are the angles at that. So the first one is 25 degrees flaring in. So that's flaring in. This is no flare. This is 70 degrees flaring out, etc. Now it's a little bit tricky in the flare to do that right there. And we considered making some other system to be able to just jump from a value. Uh, at the moment, I can't remember what the conclusion was that, but at the moment we've got a very, very small length with a very large angle. And just by adjusting this angle slightly, you can adjust how far down it goes until there's this cross beam and this, this one's not as much. And you just play with the angle a little bit and you'll end up getting something like that. It's okay if it's really sharp like this, where you can see what you're doing, but as soon as you get into, hey, just, you know, within 0.5 of a pixel, <laughs> I want you to flare this much, it's a bit of trial and error. Anyway, I don't think it's that big a deal. Usually here, here for instance, is a bunch of flares within the rocket ship without us needing to deal with that. And, and same within here, it was just under that circumstance right there. On each of these, we can also put a different color. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, the uh, you can't like this is shading right here you can't tell just because it looks natural but this is actually a different color if it were all the same color it wouldn't look quite as 3d so there we are doing they're called cross colors uh, and you can set the cross to true what cross true is doing is giving you these lines that come across like that so otherwise you would just have a flare of one color all the way through without those lines. And if you do the crosses, it adjusts the flare so that um, so that it's a whole new uh, shape in a sense. It is like it's all in one shape, but this closes the path. That's it, I guess it closes the path. So it goes here, 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 here and closes. Whereas if you do a flare without the, the cross, it's all one big uh, path and then it closes it closes here. So you can color the whole thing if you want, or you can color them individually. And uh, close false. Uh, what that does, uh, what the close is, aside from closing the path, is yeah, it would actually close this end of the path to that end of the path and make, make kind of a loop around. And that can, that can be handy to say, make something like this, uh, although this one's not closed. We started here, went, and we didn't close it in here. But if we did close it, we wouldn't have to worry about the last angles or anything. It would just draw from here up to the, the start. And that can help you make picture frames that are awry like that. All right, here's the rocket flare, much the same, I think. We're using a gradient color across the whole rocket there. And, uh, so that's that. Um, the moon has a radial gradient. So there we are adding a radial gradient. What are we wiggling? Radial color. Not sure what that, what this part is. Center, no mouse. Oh, this is all still the moon. Did we wiggle the moon? Dot center, no mouse. Lens dot wiggle. Oh, okay, yeah. So this uh, we're calling a lens right there. We're just imagining that we're looking at this scene through, I don't know, some sort of remote viewing device because it's a launch pad area. So we're just wiggling uh, this bit right here to kind of give you this live shaking your head sort of motion. Now here's a flare box. So the flare box handles the button. And uh, this itself is a flare. This is one part of the border. Here's another part of the border, border two. 
Here's border three and border four, all made with flares. And then we're creating a flare box right here where we pass in an array of those flares. Where there's another thing called a multi-flare, we could have added all those to a multi-flare and then added the multi-flare here, or indeed a bunch of flares and a bunch of multi-flares, <laughs> etc. in there, so it's quite flexible there. This just helps us organize something like the flares going around a button like this, and that, or a background. This is kind of where we expected the flare to go. We looked at, uh, we saw the, the back of automobiles with their cool sort of flared tail lights. And we're saying, oh, you know what? That's, those are really cool. It would be cool if we could put those around a button. So this is a sort of, I don't know if it's extreme or whatever. It looks a little bit kids oriented, I suppose. But, um, it's flares and you sort of specify, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> We're not even hearing the rocket. Uh, I'll just refresh here. <clears throat> You're sort of specifying uh, which order they come in. And also what we've done is we made them all facing to the right. So by default, the flare starts off facing to the right. We made each one nice and easily. It would be uh, complicated if we had to work out those angles all the way around this box. So what we've done is we've just created the flares all facing that way and then we pin them at a certain like uh, the, this one is pinned at its second. This is the start of the flare right here and then we pinned it at its second joint and then or at index one I guess index zero, index one, index two. And this is the end of it but we pinned it here and told it to go to this corner and it will rotate it automatically for, for the corner so that we don't have to think about this kind of stuff. Same with this one right here. This, as a matter of fact, might be all one big one that we made or something. We pinned it probably here and showed it first and you can overlap, you know, you can have more. So here are three flares on one corner, uh, possibly this one, the red one, the angled sort of elbow there, and then this white thing that is shooting out of it. I mean, I just look at her. Who knows? That's uh, showing you that uh, he could animate these things and, and have as fancy a button or a backing as he wanted there. And that was the sort of the idea behind the flares is to wrap them around buttons and uh, make or, or cool backgrounds. Uh, this sort of technique just came across, like once we made them, we just kept going and went, oh, well, that, that sort of looks like, you know, a 3D wall. Let's make it a 3D wall. And, and there's a 3D wall. Neat, huh? All right. Well, this isn't an explore. It's a bubbling. So we're not going to spend too much more time. I just wanted to introduce you to the flare and the flare box. Uh, what we did with it is this is the one flare box. The other flare box is very similar. But we've, we've cloned a few things and added an extra border or something. So these are just cloned versions of the last ones plus an extra one. This is the pinning arrangement, I think, or you know, I can't remember for sure. I think that's what it is. And then we've taken these two things, the flare box and the flare box over or rollover, and we've added them to the button right here, the backing. So on a Zim button, you can specify a backing that is anything you want. It can be a uh, create jazz movie clip. It can be a, probably put a video in there if you watched it. Like it's just anything. Um, so we often will use pizzazz uh, backings or icons for that. And uh, here we're passing in a flare box for the backing and then the roll backing. And that takes over from the normal, the normal stuff, uh, the normal rectangle for a backing. All right, uh, that's it for the uh, the flare box. Pretty cool, huh? Or the flare, flare box, and oh, the multi-flare. Ooh, it's almost it, but not quite. Way down here at the bottom, I think there we we did the, that's launching the rocket, all that stuff. And remember, Zim looks like, I mean, we, we stack it like this, but this is just all this, that's a label, you know? So that much room on a label, we all understand what a label is, that's no problem. Here's another label. So these are just some labels and so forth. Uh, anyway, down there's a title, which is a label as well, special colors, and somewhere, here's the multiplayer right here. So we've made a flare like we did before, and this flare makes little legs. <laughs> it looks like little legs. Isn't that neat? Then we make a new multi-flare and we loop 12 times. And each time we add to the multi-flare our various uh, flare 
and rotate it. And again, we can pin the flare at a certain joint, and then when we rotate it, it would be uh, something different. Like if we pinned it, decided to pin it, pin is a parameter up here, at the second joint, it would uh, look different. And then we're animating the whole rotation after we cache it. Uh, we just cached it because we were bringing down the alpha on it. And uh, if you bring down the alpha, you can sometimes see the, how the insides of things, how they how they were created. So if you cache it and then bring down the alpha, you don't get that effect. And that's what's giving us this bit right here, these legs. So if we didn't cache that, then... Um, we see the overlapping of all of the pieces, which actually looks nice too. So if, if you want to see those sort of kaleidoscopic overlapping effects, then so be it. Well, that make, makes those little legs like that handy, huh? I mean, that would have been tricky or difficult to make otherwise, and this just took five minutes. Uh, once I started getting used to the flare, it took five minutes to make that, uh, which is nice. And that is what is bubbling here at Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract. Uh, stay tuned for a bubbling on binding, which is a very big, important update in Zim uh, if you use data. Okay, ciao.